Last year, after a blissful first year of living in a new apartment all on my own for the very first time, a man had moved in next door that I will never forget. The layout of the apartment is really crucial to understanding this incident. The most important part is that my balcony and his balcony are only partially separated by a wall. There's a solid two foot gap in which you can easily walk from one to the other. For some context, I had previously had a very lovely woman living next door for the entire first year that I lived there, who never ever crossed this balcony threshold without being explicitly invited. I only throw this in there so that you can understand that I wasn't previously concerned about someone infiltrating my space. The first time that I met this new neighbor, he was unloading his groceries from his massive truck into the assigned parking spot right next to mine. As I was driving up, he and a girl that I assumed to be his girlfriend were unloading boxes from Costco. I noticed them speaking and as soon as I was out of the car, they went silent. I nodded to them, proceeded to my elevator, and then the guy ran up behind me, threw some boxes down, and begged me to wait. No problem. I mean, I'm a good neighbor. While in the elevator, the girlfriend absolutely refused to make eye contact or even speak to me but he quickly introduced himself and he was extremely chatty. Now, in the 45 seconds where it takes to get to the floor where our apartments were, he asked me how I liked the place, where I was from, and where I worked. Now, looking back, his enthusiasm was a little strange, but I just chalked it up to him being excited to be in a new place. For the sake of the rest of this story, let's call him Sam. Sam was 33 years old, 6 foot tall, and with a slim muscular build, and had his hair buzzed extremely short, as if to mask his balding or something. He was pretty average looking by all accounts. The first few weeks, we had run into each other pretty often, and he would always make small talk, and he would always, and I mean always refer to me as Miss. I almost never ever saw his girlfriend after the first night but I would occasionally hear him talking to a lady in his apartment as the walls were pretty thin. One night about three months after Sam moved in, my boyfriend is spending the night and we were watching some movies on the couch. It's maybe around 11.30 p.m. at this point. The back of my couch is right up against the wall that I share with Sam and we hear some banging noises. My first thought is that him and his girlfriend must be getting it on or something. My boyfriend and I laugh and we try and turn the volume up a bit just to drown them out. Then in addition to the banging, the neighbors begin screaming. We can hear objects being thrown, glass shattering, etc. The words are pretty muffled but there's distinctively anger and crying going on inside of there. My boyfriend, the great gym that he is, steps onto the semi-shared balcony and in his loudest voice then yells over, Hey, is everything okay in there? After about a minute or two later, the girl opens the sliding glass door on Sam's side and then she says, Sorry about that, so we leave it alone. I'm really concerned but we have no idea what actually happened and we decide to just go to bed. Big mistake. I wake up at around 3am to even more screaming, but my boyfriend refuses to wake up and I'm not about to take my 5 foot self to go and break up whatever is going on at 3am. I considered calling the police, but I was so drowsy that I just convinced myself that I was dreaming it. I deeply regret that decision. The next morning, I woke up to some really terrible personal news and pretty much put the events of that night on the back burner. I didn't forget, but it also wasn't on my mind anymore. Fast forward about two weeks. It's a really warm day and I'm outside reading a book, wearing a robe, sports bra, and shorts. I'm sitting in a chair that faces away from Sam's apartment, so I can't see a side from where I'm sitting. I'm deep into my book when I suddenly get tapped on the shoulder. Sam is standing behind me now, and he then asks if we can talk for a second. Now, this man has already crossed a line by coming on my side of the balcony, but I also can't get to my door without physically moving him aside, so I decide to ask him what's going on. He told me that it was his birthday, and he asked if I knew where he could get some weed, because, and I quote, I seemed like a girl who knows how to have a good time. As we live in a state where weed is pretty legal, I told him that I'm sure Google would provide the best dispensary in the area, but personally, I didn't have any on me. He proceeds to tell me how he got really drunk last night, and at this point, I'm absolutely itching for an exit. 
As I start to move as if to signal that I'm done talking to him, he reaches out for my shoulder and that's when he tells me that he basically scratched my car last night because apparently he was driving while being wasted. He actually says all of this with a smile on his face, almost laughing about it. I'm surprised but mostly want to get away from him because my creep senses are totally going off now and I don't want to blow up at him for hitting my car. He says that he'll send me the info to his car insurance if I give him my number. And thankfully, I knew that that would be a bad call, so I didn't give him my number. I started to make a really bad nervous joke about knowing where he lived, and I said if the damage was bad enough, I'd just knock on his door to get his insurance. He then counters this by saying that he'll leave a note with his info on my door. He then retreats from my balcony while also saying that he'd prefer to just pay me in cash and not really involve insurance. I give it an hour or so and decide to head down to assess the damage. Sure enough, there's about two long, really new scratches on the driver's side door. They're not that deep or really worthy of a call to insurance right away. I really just didn't want to get involved with them in any way, so I decided that I could just deal with the scratches. At this point, I just knew something was off about him. Nothing unusual happens as far as I was aware on this night. The next day is a Saturday, and as I had to work the next day, I'm home alone watching some action-y movie, and it's around 11 p.m. I'm on the sofa with my cat curled up on me, and the movie is relatively loud. So it takes me a little while to register that there's this banging noise coming from the hallway of my apartment. I honestly only noticed because my cat had woken me up and had gotten all puffed up and freaked out about it. I turn down the volume of the film, and suddenly the banging is now getting louder and louder now. And I just stand up and then I hear five words no one ever wants to hear coming from their door. Open up. It's the police. My stomach dropped to the floor. I had lied to Sam the day before. I totally did have weed. And I had smoked a joint right outside the balcony maybe about 20 minutes before. I'm totally panicked high as a kite and trying to control my breathing. Because I really don't want to come off suspicious before I answer the door. I remember checking the peephole to then see a close-up of a cop's face and then opening the door, coming face to face with six officers, all of them with their guns drawn. I'm about five seconds away from completely pissing my pants in absolute fear, still convinced that I'm somehow in trouble for smoking a joint. The officer who seems to be in charge can pretty much sense immediately the level of my panic and he then says, Ma'am, you're not in trouble. We really need to speak to you about your neighbor. Can we come in? At this point I'm reeling and my whole being is absolutely tense. I let the cops inside but my heart hasn't moved from my throat. The policeman in charge asked me if I had any interactions with Sam. I tell them I barely know him and that he just lives by me and that he only moved in a few months ago. I ask why they needed to be in my apartment. I'm scared but I also don't typically get along with cops and I think I have the right to know why six of them practically just waved their guns in my face. The lead officer then proceeds to tell me that Sam is a really bad guy. He apparently beat his girlfriend so badly the night prior that she was now in the ICU for her injuries. They also told me that Sam had a gun and he had actually barricaded himself in the apartment next to mine. They said that they had spoken to the building manager and knew that my place had access to his balcony and they needed to use it. Then they asked me to go into my bedroom and lock the doors and also turn the lights off. The next 30 to 45 minutes were absolute hell. In my panic, I had left my cell phone on my kitchen counter and I had to sit in my room just listening to all of the commotion. No shots were ever fired but there was a lot of yelling and it also sounded like a lot of things were being thrown. Eventually, after what felt like a lifetime, the main officer knocked on my door and he told me that Sam had finally been arrested and then he thanked me for letting him use my apartment. They had asked me more questions for maybe about 15 more minutes and then left. I really wish this is where the story ended, but there is a bit more. In the days following Sam's arrest, I became even more panicked about him coming back to the apartment, really worried about retaliation. I hadn't really said anything to the police that would technically incriminate him, but I did tell them about the night that my boyfriend and I heard the fight. About five days later, Sam reappeared at the building as I was coming home from work one evening. He tried to approach me, but the elevator shut just as he was running to catch it. My entire body then got tense. Like the feeling you get when coming this close to getting in a car accident, but you narrowly avoid it. 
I then stayed off my balcony entirely from this point on, and I always kept the curtains closed. We didn't speak at all for another few weeks, and then we had our final interaction. Sam stopped me in the parking lot one night, literally running after me as I was about to get on the elevator. He begged me to tell him why I let the cops in that night. I told him the honest truth, that I was absolutely stoned and didn't really know what to do and had a really bad history with cops. He then got pretty upset with me and kept trying to repeat the question, obviously wanting some kind of different answer. When I couldn't give him the answer he wanted, he then offered me about $3,000 to basically testify as a character witness on his behalf. Because, and I quote, I apparently knew him, and I also knew how he really treated women. I was speechless and absolutely freaked out. He told me that his hearing was the next Thursday morning, and he asked if I could show up. I was like a deer in headlights for a moment, and then somehow, I got the hell out of there, after mumbling a string of words that were most likely pretty incoherent. The Wednesday night that was before this trial, I came home from work and my cat was acting kind of weird, like something had just spooked her, and her tail was puffed out. I kind of shook it off, but I noticed through the curtains that there was something taped to the outside of my sliding glass door. Apparently Sam had decided to leave a post-it with his phone number and name on it, and underneath it said, I'm counting on you. Needless to say, I never showed up. I took a photo of the post-it, grabbed my cat, locked all of my doors, and stayed at my mom's house for about another five days after that happened. I did phone the police to let them know that he had been on my balcony again, but they never really followed up with anything. Eventually, my boyfriend came and we went back to my place together. Everything was as it should have been. I never saw Sam again, but a few weeks later, a lady I had never seen before was cleaning out his apartment. Maybe about a month after that, some new people moved in and things have been pretty normal ever since. I tried calling the police in the county jail to see if he was in lockup again, but no one was able to release information to me. I'm hoping that means he's there if he really did do what the police said he did. So Sam, I do want to say, I'm not really sure what happened, but my biggest regret is not calling the police when I felt like I should have. Hopefully I won't ever have to see your face for the rest of my life. the beginning of my junior year in college, I moved into a new house with a really awesome girl named Jess. One day after classes, my friend Meg and I were on the front porch smoking a blunt when this guy walked by. He then went up my driveway, which was shared by the house right next door where he lived. He said hi to me and he asked if I knew Jess. I said yeah and that she's my roommate and we made a little small talk for a second. I asked if he wanted a hit of the blunt and then he took one and then carried on. After Meg had left, I was still on the porch just finishing up some classwork when that neighbor came out of his house and then said hi to me again. He walked over to my porch and then came up the stairs. I didn't really think too much about it because, I mean, he was really chill earlier. He then went on to ask me relationship advice, but all kinds of really weird things. So there's this girl I'm talking to, but she's also sending nudes and hooking up with some other guy. Why won't she do that with me? I tried in the nicest way possible to then explain that maybe she's not into him. He then went on to ask me if I would hook up with someone right after meeting them, and also if I found him attractive. I definitely didn't want to hook up and I didn't find him attractive, but I also said that in the nicest way possible. He kept calling me beautiful and basically saying that I was one of the sexiest girls he'd ever met. The conversation got awkward, so I excused myself inside and told him that I'd see him later. Later that night, I had just gotten back from hanging out with a friend. She dropped me off and as she drove away and as I was opening my door, my neighbor then came swiftly out of his door almost like he was waiting for me. He ran over to my house and then posted himself right up against my house and then asked if I wanted to hang out. I declined, saying that I still had classwork that I really needed to finish before I went to bed. He was really eager. We can do the work together, then maybe we can cuddle. I declined yet again and again. He eventually gave up and then he started asking me more sexual questions, but about my own preferences, and then he asked me if I would hook up with him. I kept deflecting and I was really trying to leave. He eventually asked me for a hug, which I also declined, but on that one he wouldn't give up. 
He ended up grabbing me and pulling me in tightly to his arms and then squeezing me, to which then left me feeling so sick to my stomach. I quickly pulled away as fast as I could, ran into my house, and then I locked the door. Some time goes by and I'm cooking in my kitchen when I then hear a knock at my front door. None of my friends were coming over, so I wasn't expecting anyone, so I was pretty clueless as to who it was. I peeked around the corner, and of course, it's the neighbor. My stomach began to sink a little. However, instead of answering the door, I just snuck myself into the bathroom and then hid for a second, hoping he'd think I'd fallen asleep. Another three knocks came, and then another, and then finally, absolute silence. Then all of a sudden, he begins calling out my name through the open window next to my door. Amy? Hello? Amy? I know you're home. I just have a few questions. Amy? Where are you? At this point, I was really sick to my stomach. I texted my friend Corey, who lived in the fraternity house just right down the street from me, to quickly run over here and act like he was here to hang out. Corey came and then he met the neighbor at my doorstep. I overheard the conversation which then consisted of, Are you her boyfriend? She told me she was doing homework tonight, but now she's having friends over? I've been wondering if she likes me. Do you think she does? Can you tell me more about her? Corey did a really awesome job at deflecting and I opened the door to get him inside the house as fast as I could. The neighbor had asked me to come outside just real quick. I did, and only because I felt safer with Corey right behind the door. He ended up asking me almost like the same questions from before, and then he ended the conversation with, Can I please have a hug? I told him I'd see him later, and then ran into the house. The next day, Jess returned from her boyfriend's, and I then told her all about our weird neighbor. Surprisingly, she apparently knew all about him and his ways. He had pretty much waited outside for her numerous times like he did for me, also watching her run up and down the street and also trying to hang out and hug her as well. Jess eventually told her boyfriend all about my encounters with our neighbor, and he then went over to have a word with him. I'm not really sure what he said to him, but the neighbor never made eye contact with me again. I'm pretty sure that if I didn't speak up and tell Jess, things would have definitely gotten worse. I know lots of people have had far worse stories than I have, but this always sends chills right up my spine whenever I think about it. About four years ago when I was 15 years old, me and my parents had moved into a brand new apartment and we decided to get a puppy. We would walk him about four or five times a day, but we still struggled a lot with my dog separation anxiety. So I imagine for the first few weeks being there, it must have been hell for my neighbors because he would always bark and cry whenever we left him all alone. However, every time we talked to my neighbors, they would just tell us not to worry about it because they hardly ever heard him and everyone was fine with it. That is, except for Tony. One Saturday, I was home alone and someone knocked on my door. It was Tony. At first, he just seemed kind of somewhat surprised to see me open the door. But then he just smiled politely and then said, Hey, can you tell your parents to come see me when they get home, please? I said yes, and then he left. I thought nothing of it. When my parents came home, I told them about my encounter with Tony, and my dad went to his apartment, suspecting that it had something to do with my dog barking. Tony told my dad that my dog was a real barker, and that he worked during the night and needed to get sleep during the day so he would really appreciate it if we could find a way to make less noise, although he did say that he understood that he knows that it was hard to control a dog's bark. He also apologized for showing up at our door, saying that he didn't know I was alone in there. According to my dad, they had a pretty nice polite conversation. My father had apologized for the inconvenience and then came home, and we did our absolute best to try and deal with my puppy's anxiety, and it worked. My dog, of course, did still bark, but wasn't so agitated as he used to be. Flash forward a few weeks. Every time my dog would sense Tony going down the stairs of our apartment building, my dog would always go nuts. He was a fairly friendly dog towards people, but for some reason, he just absolutely hated this guy. And Tony had stopped talking to us, pretty much ignoring us every time we ran into him, or he would simply just stare at us. One day, however, me and my mother came home and on our apartment door were six holes, 
It was like someone had punched the door with like a key or something sharp. My mother was pretty naive about it. She thought that maybe we had done the damage ourselves throughout the months that we'd been there. That's when Martha, one of our other neighbors, then called my mother really worried about me, then questioning her if I had been home alone during that afternoon. My mom said no and that's when Martha tells us that someone had apparently been banging and kicking at our door while also screaming a ton of insults making a scene that was so terrifying that her 11-year-old son got so scared that he hid under his bed for like four hours until Martha came home because he thought someone was breaking into our house. A few weeks later, there was a city fair at night, and my parents and I plus Martha and her family headed out to the building to go to the fair. We came back earlier around 11 p.m. It was almost 12 a.m. at this point, and someone had rang our doorbell. My dad went to see who it was, but no one responded. Usually when this happens, we either go to the window to try and see who it is or we go downstairs because it's usually the mailman. But since it was midnight, my dad found it very strange and he didn't go downstairs. He pretty much just ignored it and we all went to bed. Well, the next morning, my mother runs into Martha and she tells my mom that when they got back from the fair, they found Tony hidden in the dark under the stairs with a freaking baseball bat in his hands. He looked really nervous but said someone had rang the doorbell and he found it really weird that someone would do that so late at night. So he apparently came downstairs to see who it was and with a baseball bat. My mom pretty much immediately knew exactly what happened. He had rang our doorbell expecting my dad to come downstairs and see who it was. I honestly don't really know if his plan was to attack my dad or not. But my father obviously worrying about me and my mother's safety since he wasn't home during the week then went upstairs absolutely fuming and knocked on Tony's door. When Tony saw my father, I kid you not, he looked like he was about to pass out. My father had confronted him and Tony legit started crying. He told my dad that he sometimes did drugs and he really didn't know what he was doing. He then went on to apologize for actually damaging our door with a damn pocket knife and for what happened the night before as well. He didn't even lie about it. As it turns out, the reason my dog freaked out every time he sensed him and barked so much was well because Tony waited until everyone in the building had left for work and then he would go to my door and kick it, making my dog more furious every time and not so much because of his anxiety. My dad then said very calmly, This is the last time I'm going to talk to you. Next time you come near me or even look in the direction of my family again, I'm going to make my point very clear. Do you understand? The guy kept crying and trying to hug my dad. We went to the police and filed a report, but we finally stopped seeing Tony. Turns out his wife actually kicked him out and filed a restraining order for her and their daughter, because apparently one morning she actually woke up with him staring at her and their daughter while they were sleeping, and the entire house smelt like gas, because apparently he left the stove on. We moved shortly afterwards, and we never saw Tony again after that. Just some background, I grew up while not in a big city compared to many others, the biggest city in my state and it has a rather well earned reputation for violence and crime. I happen to live just on the border of one of the toughest areas in the city. I lived in a trailer park that was in the trailer closest to the bar that was right next door. This bar had a pretty bad reputation and was repeatedly shut down after noise and violence disruptions but it was always allowed to reopen as long as they changed the venue's name. I'm still very unclear on the logic of that rule. But anyways, I was no stranger to run-ins with due to unsavory types appearing seemingly out of nowhere and all of the different neighbors that I'd been warned to avoid. It was just the way it was around there and from a young age, I just kind of assumed that that was just how life worked. People are dangerous, just stay away. The position of our trailer had a fence on one side that separated us and the bar and one other trailer, which for a really long time was owned by people who were never home, abandoned, or for a brief time. There was a single mom and her daughters who were both younger than me. During those years, it felt like a cushion against anything threatening. After the single mom and her kids were evicted though, that's when the creepy neighbor dude then moved in and my life changed. It was my freshman year of high school, so I was about 13 to 14 years old at the time. My home life was not exactly leave it to beaver material to say the least, 
but due to a mix of never really knowing anything different and being naive, I was only just beginning to realize that it wasn't the norm for other people. I was really sad to lose those girls as neighbors because even though they were younger, they were my only friends in the park. After some probably highly illegal evictions that my crazy old landlady had done a few years previous, then this man moved in. Now, he was the only one who technically lived there, but during the first year or so, I would often see him in his yard with a group of men. They were old enough for my adolescent brain to deem them old, but younger than my parents. So, it was probably a mix of late 20s to mid 30s. At times, their drunken behavior was pretty comparable to the people at the bar from the other side. Things were pretty awkward from the day he moved in. Unfortunately, the first awkwardness was due to my stepfather just being a terrible human being. He was racist and proud and really amused by his racist views. The new neighbor was black. So within about two weeks, there was a six foot fence that was built between the length of our trailers because he didn't want the new neighbor on the one foot wide strip of our property that had literally never mattered before. And of course, he took a really great joy in saying insulting horrible things as he and I built it. However, our new neighbor never made any kind of complaint about his words or the absurd fence. He was really polite, and he would always wave at us whenever we would get home. This made me feel incredibly guilted, embarrassed, and pretty much indebted to this stranger for not only responding to my stepfather's hate and kind, but also repaying us with kindness. Unfortunately, that very reaction helped set up a really dangerous situation. One thing that had started even before the fence was actually finished was that he and his group of friends would always move closer to the front of his trailer if they ever saw me leave to check the mail by myself. Our mailbox was a community box in the middle of the park, and me checking it was one of my chores. I would leave to the mailbox and they'd either be inside on the porch or in the yard. Inevitably, I would always come back to them then congregating in the front or driveway area. He would say hello to me and his friends would just stare and then laugh. I've always been pretty afraid of strangers and, well, religious people in general. It was a long-running joke in my family just how frightened and uncomfortable that I would get around strangers. They all knew I would grow out of it, and they thought that I would think it was funny too. Well, I haven't, and I don't. And my gut has actually saved me and protected me more times than I can count, so I'm no longer ashamed of my wariness. I would mumble hello, try to smile, and then wave at them but I'm pretty sure I looked spooked because that was pretty much my natural state. I was sure that they were laughing because I probably looked scared, but as time passed, I began to feel more comfortable saying hello and waving at them. They'd all still laugh though, which once again would make me uncomfortable all over again. I just couldn't figure out what they were laughing at. Was it at me, my voice, my smile, the way I was waving? Did I walk funny? More than anything, I really just wished that they'd ignore me at that point. Then one day as I walked down to the mailbox, the neighbor ran up to me and then walked with me, and that became the daily norm. He would come join me and ask me normal questions about my day, school, etc. as we walked. I really didn't like it. It was more than my normal anxiety. I pretty much just always heard alarms going off every time he was near me but I didn't really trust myself back then. I'd been told so many times how stupid I was for being afraid that I just kept berating myself for being paranoid about this nice man who had never actually done anything wrong. Also of note, he never once checked his own mail during these trips. If he had, it would have at least given me a fraction of comfort. If he just needed to check his mail too, then it wasn't weird that he came to the mailbox with me. One particular afternoon, the dialogue, well, started to change on these trips. We were at the mailboxes once again, and then he said, Hey, so don't tell your dad I said this, but you've got really great legs. While looking me up and down. I don't really know why at the time, but I really just wanted to cry and take a shower. I just knew he shouldn't have said that. I had stopped checking the mail for maybe about three weeks after that. It took a long time for my parents to notice that I probably wasn't being truthful when I told them. There wasn't anything in the mailbox today. My mom had started yelling at me for being too lazy to walk to the mailbox, and I finally just told her that I wasn't being lazy. I was scared of the neighbor. 
I then explained that he'd been going to the mailbox with me and what he said. And well, dear old mom thought it was absolutely hilarious. She pretty much just thought that I was being stupid and shy and pretty much scared over nothing. She brought it up in dinner and then insisted I tell my stepfather. I halfway thought that just maybe he'd get it. After all, the neighbor said not to tell him, so he must have known it wasn't okay. My stepdad went quiet for a moment, and then he said, Well, you do have nice legs, so what? So I was ashamed because it was obviously nothing, and I just needed to get a grip. I eventually started checking the mail again, and the neighbor didn't join me anymore, which made me feel guilty because I was afraid I hurt his feelings. But he was also no longer hanging out with the group of friends all the time. For a while, he was rarely even home, but when he was home, he was always alone. Fast forward a few months or so, I started randomly seeing him whenever I was home alone or checking the mail. He'd always wave and smile at me, then enforcing that feeling of shame for overreacting. But then on one evening while I was taking a shower, my mother banged on the door, then yelling that I was steaming up the bathroom and that it was going to make the carpet mold. So, as I'd done many times before, I turned the crank to open the little window in the shower to let some steam out. This window was pretty much exactly forehead level at top, but only about four to five inches tall and ran the length of the shower wall. I'd been opening it while showering pretty much every day since I was five or six. You couldn't see the person in the shower except for their head, and even then you'd have to be looking to even notice it. I cracked it open, but I then heard a sound, so I then looked out. I immediately made eye contact with creepy neighbor dude. I instantly looked away because I felt like I was being rude by looking out the window. I then kind of crouched to try and hide my head and try to continue with my shower, but I felt exposed and really uncomfortable. So a couple of minutes later, I decided to peek out the window again just to reassure myself that it was really just an unfortunate coincidence. He was still there, leaning on his porch railing, when he then smiled slowly when we made eye contact again. I closed the window and then quickly finished. I lectured myself endlessly that it was all just a coincidence and that I was just being stupid again. But after it happened about three different times, I just started taking really fast cold showers so that I didn't have to open the window. Shortly after the unpleasant shower event started, He'd started waiting outside for me whenever I'd get home from school. I would walk home from the bus stop and he'd just happen to be in front of his trailer. At first it was just every now and then, but then it became daily. He would walk out into my path and then block me from my front gate. He would make small talk like he'd done countless times during the walks to the mailbox. I would always answer as politely as I could while also insisting that I really needed to get inside and take care of my dogs since they'd been inside all day while my parents were at work and I at school. Around that time, there was a girl about a year younger than me that moved into the park at the far other end. She was really nice and we had a class together but we didn't really talk to each other. That is until one day when we got off the bus and she told me to hold on. She asked if I wanted her to walk with me. I was really surprised and confused by the offer, but really excited that maybe he'd leave me alone if I wasn't alone. I accepted her offer and then she asked me if I knew the creepy guy that lived next door to me. I was so relieved that someone else thought he was creepy that I actually wanted to cry and laugh at the same time. She said that about a week before, she'd stopped at the landlord's trailer to ask a question, and when she left, she saw me walking to my door and him just standing there watching. And then when he saw her, He started walking with her and trying to talk to her as well, and then he told her she had beautiful hair. She told him to screw off and then she ran the rest of the way home. She and I developed a system where she would walk me to my driveway, and then I'd stand on my porch and walk her until she turned on the corner where I and he could no longer see her. He finally stopped waiting for us after school. A couple of weeks went by with nothing really weird happening. It was now fall and when I left for the bus stop in the mornings, it was dark now and my new friend only rode the bus in the afternoon. One morning he saw me leave for the bus and then he called for me to have a good day. From that point on, he was always there when I would leave the house. Both of my parents worked really early shifts, so I was usually always alone from about 5.30am and it was obvious because their vehicles were gone. At first, he would pretend to have something to do outside at the exact same time and always act surprised to see me. 
Then he started just sitting out in front of his house waiting. Halloween came and I wore a costume to school. I was 15 years old and like most costumes that you can buy at Party City or Walmart in a bag, it was admittedly a bit revealing. Nothing crazy. I was like Midnight Spider Witch or some other nonsense. It was a long sleeve dress that went down to my ankles, but was much more form fitting than anything I normally wore. It was a little low cut and had a slit up the side that went higher than one might want. I waited and watched out that tiny shower window and didn't leave at normal time. I saw him go inside his house and then I made a break for it. He eventually caught up to me before I was even completely past his driveway. He made some really creepy comments about how I sure was growing up nice and then warning me to be careful with boys. I ran for the bus stop calling over my shoulder that I had to hurry or I'd miss the bus. After that, he then started waiting for me in my driveway at my gate in the mornings. I would completely get ready for school then peek out my window to see if he was there and he almost always was. He would pace back and forth and whistle. Some mornings I would go out and just face him, but then he started touching my shoulder or putting his hand on my back, so I literally started ditching school just to avoid him. I would call my mom at work and say that I missed the bus or that the bus came early. One of my friends was learning how to drive and every once in a while he would pick me up to make sure I went to school. My neighbor would retreat to his own driveway and then he would glare at us as I got in the car and we drove off. One day after I had missed almost a full week of school, he was in his driveway with about three other guys waiting for me when I came from checking the mail. He called my name as I went to walk past him. I gave him a wave but continued my walking. He then intercepted me and then he said, Wait, I have a gift for you since you've been homesick. I made it for you. He then proceeded to hand me some kind of door hanger thing. It was made of beads and it had my name on it and the colors were the exact color scheme of my bedroom. I was beyond freaked out at this point. First of all, until that day he never even once said my name and I had felt some really odd comfort in believing that he didn't know it. Second of all, he had never been inside my home, not even for a second that I was aware of, and I just knew that my racist stepfather wouldn't have allowed him in, and my mother was way too afraid of my stepfather to allow him in. My bedroom was at the front of the trailer and had two big windows, but my scaredy cat self was way too cautious of who or what may peek inside to ever open my blinds or curtains even for a minute. The color scheme of my room wasn't exactly an easily guessed combination. I then said something that resembled a thank you and made my way inside while he and his friends watched me go and then laughed. I took it with me to school the next day and I broke down crying to all of my friends. They all thought it was pretty weird of course but since he never actually hurt me, some of them thought that I was just being too paranoid and that he was just a nice but strange guy. Some of them actually agreed with me that it was really wrong and it felt like it was building up to something bad. My friend that I mentioned earlier who would sometimes give me rides was really worried because of how angry the guy acted whenever I got rides. In fact, that same friend picked me up and brought me home from school for the rest of the year. I tried to do my best to just never be outside my home alone from that point on. A couple of months later, I got a job and I decided to drop out and get my GED and pretty much just started not being home period as much as possible. We had a few uncomfortable run-ins where he'd say weird things like, You've got a good figure, just what men want. Be careful not to lose that figure. But once I got help from friends, it became pretty easy to avoid him. So, plot twist. About three years later after the gift incident, life had changed for me in a gazillion ways. Not the least of which the FBI actually arrested my stepfather and he went to federal prison. So, my mother had found herself living in the trailer all alone as I had moved out before that. While on the phone one night, she then asked, What do you think of Bobby? To which I then responded that I didn't know a Bobby. Getting kind of annoyed, she then said, He's lived next door for years. Don't you remember? Your dad hated him. I pretty much laughed and then said, Oh, you mean creepy neighbor guy? Obviously, I think he's creepy. Cue awkward silence and then her saying, Oh, well he kissed me today. I think I like him. Cue shocked and dismayed silence followed by me reminding her about the leg comment and all the other times that he was creepy to me. 
Her response? Oh, you know how you are. You're just always scared of everyone. You probably just had a crush on him and didn't realize it. Spoiler alert, it didn't work out for them romantically, but he did try to become a squatter in her trailer and he actually had to be forcibly removed from it. So yeah, creepy neighbor Bobby. I'm so damn glad that I finally moved out of there and I never have to see you ever again. Thank God. <laughs>